Hello, massage nerds. Someone asked me recently if I could do some pathologies. So I decided to start a series now of pathologies of each body system. So this one's for you, Cruz. Thanks for the suggestion. And I want to start today with a, a muscular system pathologies, the most common ones. And there's a few things that I'd like to talk about before we start because, you know, as massage therapists, we always got to think of the contraindications and some tips that we must know and learn because most people that walk in through our doors usually have, you know, something going on and, uh, you know, they're not just coming in most of the time for a relaxation massage, even though that's very good. Most people nowadays have several things going on. So one of the things that you must always remember with any of these is that, you know, if they have inflammation and remember itis, the, the suffix of itis means inflammation or heat. So if they have inflammation, uh, you don't want to work on them. You want to wait until the inflammation has, has gone down. Also, if they've been in a car accident or any type of an accident, actually, you must wait 72 hours for the simple reason that your body's still running on adrenaline for, you know, for a day or two, and you might not feel any, you know, real injuries until after that the adrenaline, you know, clears from your body. So it's better that they get an okay from the doctor, get checked by the doctor, and after 72 hours, you can start working on them. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about the difference between syndrome and disease, just so that you guys can get an idea. You know, some of them are syndromes, some of it's a disease. So a disease is a specific correlation, a specific cause, like um, high glucose is a specific cause for, you know, diabetes. So you already know cause and effect. So that's a disease. And syndrome is a group of symptoms, a group of patterns that take the body out of homeostasis. So it interrupts homeostasis, like in the instance of fibromyalgia syndrome, myofascial pain syndrome. So those are syndromes, okay, because it's a group of symptoms. So with all that being said, let me start by talking to you about, about uh, myasthenia gravis. And I had a client with myasthenia gravis, so I wanted to, it's not in the book, but I wanted to touch a little bit on that. That is a neuromuscular condition. Remember, neuromuscular, if you break it down, the prefix and the root word, so it's the connection with the nervous system and the muscle. Now you have the sarcolemma. The sarcolemma is the, the muscle cell membrane and it's got, you know, the motor end plates where it's kind of curved. And then you have the nerve, okay? The nerve releases acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter. And then the sarcolemma receives that message and myasthenia gravis is where the breakdown happens right at that neuromuscular junction the muscle does not receive the message this only happens in uh, skeletal muscles only it does not happen in your heart and in your smooth muscle thank god those are from the autonomic nervous system so they are not affected However, it does affect the lungs because as you can, as, as you well know, even though we do breathe automatically at night, we do have co some control over our breathing. So it can cause, you know, damage to the lungs muscles and that's where it becomes very dangerous. So anyway, that's just a little bit about myasthenia gravis. So let me start now with a decorvian tenosynovitis and remember, Anytime you see itis is inflammation or fire. So that means that the ten tendon is, you know, swollen here. And it's in particular the tendon sheath. And tendon sheath is a thin layer, you know, around the tendon. So that's swollen and it causes pain. And this uh, happens on the radial side. Remember, the radial side in anatomical position is where your thumbs are. So it happens right here, more or less at the carpal metacarpal joint. Actually, this is what's wrong with my hands because of 
after working for 32 hours and using overusing my thumbs so it happens with repetitive motion with injuries you know I've, I've, I've damaged mine so one of the things that you might want to do is with us this, this is a cryo stick is you know apply a little bit you know of ice you know on the wrist and the thumb because it does affect the abductor pollicis longus and I was just teaching my students on how to break down the names of the muscles and I don't think I have time to go into all of that but abductor means that you know ab abducts the you know the muscle away from the midline adductor would add it so this muscle right here gets very affected you know with the uh, tenosynovitis so you might want to start with a little bit of cryotherapy to kind of you know uh, re relax the muscle a little bit so that's one thing that you can do so that would be the decorbian tenosynovitis next is tension headaches they are due to uh, stress tension hormonal sinus they can be occipital you know from the occipital uh, bone or frontal you know or temporal so it depends where the headaches are you know would you believe that it's anywhere from 60 to 80 percent of, of, of mainly women that get migraine headaches you know but most of them are tension headaches so you really want to check the suboccipitals because the suboccipitals you know behind you know um, the the occiput right below it are also known as ghost headaches so a lot of times when the suboccipitals are really tense it may cause some headaches now also you know if you're um if you have sinus infection or if your sinuses are swollen you know that's also going to give you a sinus headache and hormonal that has to do with hormones but what i you know advise to a lot of my clients is to use ice because it prevents the blood flow from pounding in your head and so i do try to apply a little bit of ice or you know cryotherapy when they have tension headaches so next will be fibromyalgia fibro meaning the fiber myo meaning muscle and alja means pain syndrome so this is a group you know a, a group of symptoms that causes fibromyalgia it's widespread pain it's an it, you have clients have tender spots they get very fatigued and you know um stiffness so this you really have to um, take into consideration your client every client's different fibromyalgia and myofascial pain relief are similar you know and I have also found that every client is different every time they come in one day you know they can take a little more pressure another day they don't so get to know your client find out you know let them give you enough feedback as to how they feel because you don't want to overwork it one day they might say oh i feel really good and you go a little deeper and they'll be sore for two or three days so be very careful with that you know um you want to stay away from going in and especially from some people that like to do deep tissue you know that's one of the things that i always teach us you know i i i you don't have to do deep tissue you have to be more specific so for you know uh, fibromyalgia or myofascial pain syndrome you want to do more of a swedish and you also want to do some trigger points especially on the mps because it's found in taut bands so they do have trigger points and you can address those trigger points remember you stay always within the pain tolerance of the client usually a four a five and a six on a scale from one to ten you know if you if they say the pain is already a seven or eight please back off you never want to you know do more than what the client can handle because it will you know have severe consequences after the where they're really sore they might not want to come back so low pressure is better and like i said it varies from time to time and client to client next is the osgood schlatter disease so this is a direct cause we know what causes it it's patellar from the kneecap tendonitis tend tendonitis you know if you look at the suffix and you know and the uh, uh, the suffix itis means inflammation and the prefix tendon so it's inflammation of the tendon 
It's very common with teenagers, you know, usually between the ages of 11 and 13, but I've seen as, you know, as far as 15. So it, it varies on age, but it's very common in male uh, teenagers because they're usually the ones playing sports. You know, they're usually the ones that uh, are out there playing soccer, football, running, jumping. So it's very common and it is called Oswood Schlatter disease and it's patellar tendonitis so it's swollen again you know if it's not too swollen I mean if it looks like a baseball then yes refer to the doctor but if it's not that bad you might want to use some cryotherapy you know uh, whatever you have I just like to use the stick because it's a little bit you know like for the for the wrist and and thumb but you can use whatever you have at your office uh, it causes it's caused by repeated stress or sports next is number six which would be the plantar fasciitis plantar meaning that it's from the plantar part of your foot fasciitis is from the fascia and itis from being swollen however i did hear a doctor recently i even posted this on my instagram that he said we should rename the plantar fasciitis because it, the band is so thick that it doesn't really get swollen it just gets really tight and it starts from the calcaneus which is your heel bone and then it fans out you know all the way to your toes and it's pooling it can also cause you know like the heel spurs and it it's just really a tight band so it's a thick band at the calcaneus that fans out to the toes and it's very painful it's very common i've had many clients that have this people that stand on their feet too long you know athletes um people that work standing up all day can be you know people that you know sometimes wear heels so this is very painful one of the things i recommend to my clients is to get a just a 12 ounce bottle of water and freeze it and then put your foot on it and roll with your own pressure you know that you can handle is roll your foot over that frozen water because it does really help bring down the pain and the swelling of the muscles so that's the plantar fasciitis next is the shin splints shin splints is has to do with the tibia with the tibialis anterior actually so it's in the medial tibia and the tibialis anter anterior and it's very common f with runners you know it's usually you know one side unilateral uni meaning one by meaning two so however it can be bilateral so it can affect both sides so it's right along the tibia and it's very important for you to really work out and get into the tibialis anterior muscle the origin and the insertion so that's an important one next will be strain and sprain so strain with a t has to do with the muscles you know and sprain is with ligaments so i, I just wanted to mention the difference between sprain and strain for this uh, you know for this pathology we're going to be talking about strains because that has to do with tendons and with muscles so you have a type 1 strain and that's mild a type 2 which is moderate and then a type 3 and what that means is it has to do with a tendon you know sometimes the tendon gets really pulled you know taut and so if it's mild you know they feel pain you know they it's what they call a pull muscle so there's like they may feel a pull muscle that's a type 1 if there's a little bit of bruising you know and it's really painful and swelling that's probably a type 2 however when they tear that tendon right off you know the bone or the muscle that's a type 3 and they get very bruised and that's usually when you know I mean they definitely have to go to the doctor for that one and we definitely can't touch that that's one thing to be very careful with guys if somebody comes in and that happened to me too I mean what can I say after 32 years I think I've seen so much already but I had a client that had been in a motorcycle accident and his muscle was purple and swollen and it was one of his adductors and he couldn't even walk and he wanted me to work on it but I, I i knew better thank god i knew better because i knew that if i started stretching it and working on it and it was torn i was only going to do more damage so be careful guys you know find out if it's a type one two or three strain so strain with a t has to do with tendons a sprain has to do with ligaments and ligaments attach 
bone to bone and uh, tendons attach bone to muscle. Now let's move on to torticollis. Torticollis is a spasm of the SCM or sternocleidomastoid. And it also the trapezius might be involved, the scalenes, and it's usually, uh, and the splenius capitis. Splenius capitis in the posterior part is the mirror image of the SCM. So, you know, sometimes people wake up, it's usually, usually unilateral. You know, it's usually one side where you can't, like when you're driving, you know, you wake up like this. And sometimes, you know, people wake up like this and they can't turn their head, you know, it's the, usually the SCM. So you want to make sure and work these muscles. Uh, moist heat is very good for torticollis. Moist heat is very easy. You just get a, a washcloth and use warm water, not to burn themselves, but warm water, wring it out and put it directly on the muscle. That really helps the muscles relax. You know, I'm old to school, so I usually try to do home stuff that's not cheap i don't go for buying a lot of you know things to help you know same thing with the eyes or cryotherapy so moist heat is good for that you know and you know if you can't drive people they can't drive and turn their head because it hurts very important for you to be very careful work the scm the sternocleidomastoid the scalenes and you must be trained for that because remember in the little triangle here we have blood vessels so you don't want your client to pass out so you've got to know what you're doing but you can work you know the um, splenius capitis trapezius and all the muscles around there too so that would be torticollis and um, tendonitis tendinosis and tenosynovitis let's talk about that so tendonitis is inflammation of the tendon you know if you split it you know the root work is tendon itis is the suffix so this is inflammation of the tendon tendinosis osis is degeneration of the tendon where it starts getting frail you know the mu the tendon attaches the muscle to the bone and you know maybe after repetitive motion or an injury it's like it's like when you have a piece of thread you know a, a thread or a yarn that starts frailing you know or the end of your shoelaces that start frailing coming apart that would be tendinosis you know it's coming apart it's becoming frail and a lot of times people need surgery you know to fix this and the last one would be tenosynovitis and this is inflammation of the synovial sheath remember this you know that the tendon sheath surrounds you know it's a thin layer that surrounds the tendon so this is tenosynovitis a lot of times you know ten, uh, ten, tendinosis and tendinitis are uh, misdiagnosed you know uh, it's difficult you know if you, they don't have a medical doctor you know that can really diagnose these things they've got to come in and tell you what it is you know so that you can be careful and that's the difference between the three so tendonitis is inflammation of the tendon tendinosis is degeneration of the tendon and tenosynovitis is inflammation of the synovial sheath around the tendon so these are some of the very common um, pathologies of the muscular system, and I do plan to do one for every uh, or every body system. So I think I'm going to tackle the skeletal system next. Oh, and for my students, next is the um, integumentary system. So I'll be doing that. So thank you for your support. Subscribe to my YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. And until the next time, create a great day.